Everything I ever did, the thing that I heard out of people's mouth was, that's impossible. That can't be done. Or no. Imagine, you go from studio executive to studio executive, from agent to agent, from manager to manager, and they all said exactly the same thing. Now that's very encouraging, isn't it? But you know something? I didn't give a shit. Because I believed that I can be a leading man. I believed that I could be another Clint Eastwood or another Burt Reynolds or another Warren Beatty or whatever those characters were, Charles Bronson and so on. I believed that I could be those people. I said, there's enough room on that ladder that I can fit up there. And I looked back again and learned from what I learned in sports. In my case, in bodybuilding. It's all about the hard work that you put in. I said to myself, in bodybuilding, I worked out five, six hours a day. I'm going to do the same thing now for acting. So whenever someone said to me, it can't be done, I heard it can be done. When they said no, I heard yes. And when they said it's impossible, I heard it is possible. Because I am a strong believer. Well, I'm going to be the one, I said to myself, I'm going to do it and I'm going to show it to them. Maybe it has never been done before. That's perfectly fine with me. But I'm going to do it. And I did not listen to the naysayers. So people always ask me, when they saw me in the gym in the pumping iron days, they said, why is it that you're working out so hard? five hours a day, six hours a day, and you have always a smile on your face. The others are working out just as hard as you do, and they look sour in the face. Why is that? And they told people all the time, I said, because to me, I'm shooting for gold. In front of me is the Mr. Universe title. So every rep that I do gets me closer to accomplishing that goal, to make this goal this vision turned into reality. Every single set that I do, every repetition, every weight that I lift will get me a step closer to turn this goal into reality. So I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound squat. I couldn't wait to do another 500 pound bench press. I couldn't wait to do another 2000 reps of sit-ups. I couldn't wait for the next exercise for the next half hour of posing and all the kind of things that you have to do. You'll be a champion. The very body that they said can never be sold because the time is wrong. A few years later, I'm doing Conan the Barbarian and it was the number one hit at the box office when it came out in the summer of 82. Think about that. And the director says, if we wouldn't have had his body, we would have had to build one. I mean, think about it. And the end, I was just not visualizing just my exercise, but I was really lifting the trophy over my head. That's what I was thinking about. And with the age of 20, with the age of 20, I went to London and I won the Mr. Universe contest as the youngest Mr. Universe ever. And it was because I had a goal. Because I believed seventy four percent hate their job in America. Now, there is not much different when you come to Europe. The majority of people don't like what they're doing because they're really not doing it because they didn't have a goal and they followed this goal. They just aimlessly drift around and then all of a sudden there's a job opening so they get that job because you have to work. But then when you work, it's a chore. It's work. It's not fun. So if you think about only a quarter of the people really enjoy what they're doing in life. That is unbelievable if you think about it. So I felt so blessed that I knew what I was doing. It's like a medical student that studies and knows he wants to become a doctor. You know where to go. So I knew where to go. 
You see, if you don't have a vision of where you go and if you don't have a goal where you go, you drift around and you never end up anywhere. It's like you can have the best ship in the world, you can have the best airplane in the world. If the pilot or the captain doesn't know where to go, it will just drift around. It will not end up anywhere or most likely in the wrong place. And I didn't really like Austria when I grew up. I couldn't wait to get out of there. I couldn't see myself becoming a farmer or a worker in a factory or anything like that. Even though my parents wanted me to stay there and have a normal life. But that was their vision, not mine. My vision was totally different. I felt that I was born for something special, for something unique, for something big. Do you know how great it felt that I knew where I was going? Imagine the majority of people don't know where they're going. I knew where I was going. So it was just a question of how do you do it? I ask a studio executive, I say, I want to get into movies. I want to be a leading man. He started laughing. So they all say it's impossible. I said, why is it impossible? It's because look at how big you are. You weigh 250 pounds. And then they told me this, and your accent, even if you reduce all your body weight and everything and have a normal body, your accent. This is no one in Hollywood ever has become a leading man that had an accent. Doesn't happen. They said, no, you see, it's impossible. And plus your name, your name, who can pronounce Schwarzen Schnitzel or something like that? No one can pronounce that, so forget about it, Arnold. This is the kind of thing that I heard. It's all about the hard work that you put in. I said to myself, in bodybuilding, I worked out five, six hours a day. I'm going to do the same thing now for acting. Accent removal, acting classes, and all of this stuff, all day long. I worked and I worked and I worked. And then all of a sudden, I was asked by Dino De Laurentiis in the Universal Studio, biggest studio, to star in Conan the Barbarian. And after I did Conan the Barbarian, the director at the press conference said to the press, if we wouldn't have had Arnold, we would have had to build one. So all of a sudden, my body became an asset, not a liability. And the same thing was with Terminator. After we were finished filming Terminator, Jim Cameron said to the press, if Arnold wouldn't have had that accent and talked like a machine, I think the movie wouldn't have worked. So think about that. The body and the accent that they attacked was an asset. But I didn't listen to those losers. I didn't listen to them at all. Because that's exactly the way it was in politics again when everyone said no, 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 and it can't be done. And I became governor of California. And this is with everything like that. This is just the reality of it, is, is that you cannot listen to the naysayers. So this is a very important lesson for all of you. So when someone says, no, this is a stupid idea, you in your mind, you don't have to say it, but in your mind, just say this of you. you know. What do you know? If I would have listened to the naysayers, from bodybuilding to show business to uh, politics, I would not be standing here today talking to you. I would be in Austria in the Alps yodeling. That's right. I would be in Austria still left yodeling. That's what I would be doing exactly. So this is why I say don't listen to the naysayers.